Okay, my friends, welcome to this chess video, and we'll continue with our endgame essentials, looking at bishop and knight mate. Now, you might have a very valid objection that the chances of meeting this over the board are pretty slim. However, the reason we learn bishop and knight mate is not simply to learn it for its own sake. It's because it teaches two very important principles that apply in all chess positions. The idea of restriction and the idea of peace coordination. Bishop and Knight are excellent for teaching these two very important concepts. Now we're going to work backwards. We're going to look at the mating sequence. And then we're going to look at how we can drive the Black King across to a favourable square. The Black King will always try to run to one of these corners opposite the colour of our Bishop. With a light square Bishop, he will always try to run to a dark square. But we've driven him across the chessboard. And we're now in a position to deliver checkmate. So, 96 check. He's got a single square. Bishop d5 and we deliver mate along this diagonal here. There's only one thing that we need to be very careful of if we go back to this starting position here. Here it's black's turn to move. He's got a single square, king e8. We don't want to play a move like knight to a6, resulting in stalemate. So we've got to lose a move with our bishop. Bishop d7, king is a single square. Now we can go into our mating sequence, knight a6 check, king e8, and bishop c6 checkmate. We have this beautiful position here with knight, king and bishop and the black king in mate. So this is just one of the little things we need to be careful of when going into our mating sequence. But let's see how we can drive the black king across the chessboard. You can see that he is in a dark square corner. He's run to this corner to try and get away from our bishop. We're gradually going to push him across the chessboard though, restricting his movement to the 8th rank. He will try to break out along the 7th rank, but we can use our knight and our bishop to prevent him doing so, and eventually he will be forced back to the 8th rank. Often he will try to run back to this square, but we can prevent him doing so with our knight and our bishop. And again, he will be forced, through lack of moves, towards this corner here. But this is the position you want to reach. With kings in diagonal opposition. The bishop preventing the, the king from running. And the knight ready to jump in with check. This knight here will move in a... W formation like this here. Restricting the Black King's movement. But let's see how it works out, right? We're going to push the Black King across. Knight f7, check. The King has only got a single square. King g8. And here it's important to lose a move. We'd want to reach this position with black to move because he will be forced to come here. So we lose a move with our bishop, bishop e4, king f8. And this is an important move, bishop h7, preventing the black king from trying to run back. Well, already we've pushed him almost halfway across the chessboard. King e8. We want to prevent him trying to run to the 7th rank. So we move our knight in W formation. Knight e5, preventing him coming to d7. If we 
it tries to run backwards I'm simply checking with her knight and it'll be forced back so king d8 move her own king along and he does have the opportunity to come to c7 and I'll cover that in the variations but just for the sake of brevity see, he tries to go to c8 This is a very important move. This covers these dark squares. And we'll use the knight in conjunction with the bishop to prevent the black king coming any further. It doesn't stop him trying. King c7. Bishop c4. Sorry, bishop e4. And you can see how the knight and the bishop prevent the black king coming any further. Well, he's got to go back. King d6. And King d8. He's trying to run back to this corner here. You can prevent it with, <clears throat> excuse me, Bishop g6. There's only one way. How did we prevent the king coming here? Knight c5. Tries to run. Check him with the knight. It's got to go back and king c6 and it's the king and the knight prevent him running any further so he's only got a single move king b8 king b6 tries to run here will prevent it with the bishop and the knight and the bishop will cover all of these squares. He does try to run. Bishop f5 check. And here we have reached our mating sequence. Knight c5. King has got a single square. King e8. Do we play knight e6? No chance. We lose a move with the bishop. Bishop d7. King b8. Knight e6, king e8, and bishop c6 checkmate. And we've successfully pushed the king right across the chessboard, preventing him from running, pushing him back, and we've delivered mate. Now, the best way to get into this is to practice it against a computer. And once you get it, you will never forget it. It's it's like swimming or riding a bicycle or something. I mean, you almost do it um, subconsciously. It's a really, really important concepts to learn. Restriction and peace coordination. Especially if we're trying to weave a mating net around our opponent's king. So I'll leave the links in the description, my chess friends, for you. To, to practice this if you're inclined and uh, once you get it then it's, it's actually quite satisfying believe it or not maybe that's sad I don't know I think that's pretty nerdy mm, could be <laughs> I don't know but um, I'll leave the description anyway and perhaps you can reach your inner nerd and uh, learn this uh, bishop and knight checkmate but Thank you once again for taking the time to watch this chess video. We'll continue on. Probably the next video we'll look at, we'll do some more game analysis of some awesome chess games. And we'll alternate that between uh, end game and uh, game analysis. So once again, I thank you so much for taking the time to watch this chess video. And I sincerely wish you well with your own chess. Take care and goodbye.